um, I'm glad that I can speak um, today about uh, three amazing visuals for Power BI, Archis Maps, Sandance, and Synoptic Panel. I am Marek Matuszewski. I'm managing partner, and I play a role of um, head of business intelligence at FXCon uh, AG. Um, I'm a person who loves, who loves really data and um, my um, current um, core competence, competencies uh, are Power BI, uh, visualizing data in Power BI and also uh, data science. As uh, Dan already said, I'm living in Germany. Um, it's a little city called Windeck. It is very close to Cologne. If you want to contact me, um, feel free to contact me. Uh, you have over uh, down here, like Xing, LinkedIn, and Twitter um, accounts. Um, pretty short about our company, FXCon. Um, we are a very modern company. We have, um, we are actually Microsoft stack company. We deliver business solutions, cloud architecture um, solutions, data science. That's my uh, my part of job. Uh, software engineering, totally custom software engineering, and actually uh, we help you to uh, make your company successfully transformed in our new digital world. And this is, of course, our CEO, Rudiger Gross, who is uh, in the IT since 1989. Uh, pretty experienced guy. <laughs> so agenda for today, Argus, uh, Synaptic Panel, Sandance, and at the end, if we have um, five minutes, a uh, short Q&A round, but if you have any questions, feel free uh, to write in the chat and I will uh, try to react simultaneously. Uh, so let us start, Argus Maps for Power BI. Um, so I can turn off the PowerPoint actually to the end of the presentation <laughs> because it will be only the demo. Um, so what we have here, uh, Argus Map, well, let us load it, uh, some Power BI. Maybe some of them already seen that uh, data set. Uh, it was it is a um, um, report which have been which has been chosen about one year ago um, for, from the Power BI community as the featured report. Uh, it's about uh, crimes in central London. The data are from 2000, uh, January 2012 up to September 2016, and the second data set which is also integrated are stop and search. Um, activities of police in central London, but the data is only uh, about one year from March 2015 up to uh, July 2016. If you would like to use the same data sets, uh, feel free to use it. Uh, here it is the data source, data.police.uk slash data. Uh, so that's what I will talk right now about is totally uh, real data and no, no fake data. Okay. Um, so about crimes here, you've seen maybe that page already um, in one of um, videos I posted somewhere in the internet. Um, but we are not focusing um, on those slicers and those uh, fancy um, visuals, but we will of course talk about Argus map itself. So I have duplicated the page and removed a couple visuals and we have now Argus map only and the visual over the right side, um, crime types, which were done um, between 2012 and 2016 in the center of London. So you see here the category is pretty popular, is just a category called other theft, shoplifting, violence of and sexual offenses and drugs. Uh, so here are the points, here are uh, the places where those crimes actually uh, happened. Uh, so. Uh, doesn't it doesn't look nice i would say so let us tune it up a little bit how to tune up uh, in argus map you just go on the top right side here more options and edit and you can choose different base maps at the beginning so uh, this is light gray canvas dark gray canvas is also available open street maps trees i like open street maps uh, so if you zoom in you see exactly this uh, the same what you see in the open street uh, maps um, if you use it in any API in your application. And you can also uh, change the map theme over there. And instead of having just a point, which is actually not saying me much, I can change it to heat map. And then I see the um, warm areas, I would say, in the center of London, where I am not necessarily uh, would drive uh, with a bike or uh, being alone um, in, um, at, at night. 
but if it is true, it, if it uh, does have a correlation, uh, if it is more dangerous at night or not, we will see um, in the future, actually at the end um, of the presentation. So you can also choose uh, size, clustering. Clustering is pretty interesting here. So uh, you can choose um, here of, of when you choose the clustering and move on to simple style. You can uh, crank it a little bit up and uh, play a little bit with that. And changing, for example, cluster radius instead of uh, 550 pixels, let us change to 200. And you see that it's clustered a little bit different as it would be uh, clustered after um, 50 pixels. So we can choose uh, transparency, stuff like that. But that's not everything. Um, there are a lot more base maps available if you sign in to the uh, Plus subscription, uh, which is actually not so um, expensive at all. It costs about um, five dollars uh, per user per month, so not not a big deal. I'm just signing in, and okay, you have successfully signed in into Plus, and I will show you the Plus uh, features which are available in S3 Map. Um, so as you can see here, uh, we have imagery, imagery that's powerful. But imagery without having the names of the street might be boring. So you have also the possibility to choose imagery with labels. And then you can also see um, the, uh, the names of the streets. So that's pretty, pretty much cool. Um, OK, let us uh, change to location only again. And um, also here, uh, what that, which, whichever um, map theme you choose, uh, in the symbol style pane, uh, you will, of course, um, have a possibility to play a little bit and format the data and changing the colors to red and changing the symbol size, uh, changing the shape, and yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, but I uh, would like to focus on the features, about the features, what you really can um, make with that, what, what, what uh, can give you more insights. So one of the great features, which I actually love, um, is uh, drive time. Actually, I, would, I wanted to talk about drive time right now, but we'll um, do it it's on, in the right order and start to talk about pins. So pins are actually points which we can pin uh, to the map uh, custom address, custom address. Uh, so for example, I would like to pin a big band right here. So normally, you would uh, go in the, uh, in the Google and type the address of the uh, Big Ben and type it in, but I don't know, and I'm lazy enough, uh, so I just uh, type here Big Ben, and that's it. Big Ben Street, London, England. Yeah, fair enough. As I think it must be that one. Uh, yeah, looks looks pretty logic, and maybe add another pin like um, I know maybe um, Buckingham Palace. Yeah, get it something like that. Um, so. Those uh, okay, I can see. I can barely see where is the pin. Do you? Can you do that? Uh, so if you have the same problem as me, uh, you can go over here and change the color, make it more like uh, yellow one, and you see. Okay, here is the backing the backing in place. Um, so what is very uh, interesting about that um, that uh, whatever you choose uh, on the map is uh, has also influence on the other visuals. So what I mean by that is choosing that particular point will filter uh, the data on the right visual. So it does make a more, more, more sense. I would, would like to change UI a little bit. So I go to either edit interactions and I maybe change the uh, for filter right now and then change, uh, checking that point. Okay, and I see that on that bridge um, there is uh, violence and sexual offense pretty popular and criminal damage and drugs, right? And all other stuff uh, haven't um, happened in that particular place. Um, OK, so you can uh, select one single point, or you can choose that multi select multiple locations tool, and you just can select more of them. And then you see uh, on that part of London, um, the most popular crime is just, just a theft, other theft, uh, suppose a small one. I hope. <laughs> so, but what you uh, can also make and also uh, choose, uh, you can also interact with your actual pins you added. So you can, uh, of course, you can add some labels to there. And OK, I uh, will go back to edit mode. And then go back to pins. And by editing that, you can just say, 
uh, just a palace, palace, and here saying just big Ben. And then when you make a mouse over, or you click, yeah, then you see only the result, the name Big Ben, which I already uh, uh, provided, right? So result palace, that's what I actually right now provided. But I said that you can interact with those uh, pins, right? So how can I interact? I can, for example, use drive time uh, feature and select, for example, only those two locations. And OK, I can make single selection or um, holding a control uh, on my keyboard, and then I select two, both of them. But OK, as I said, um, I mean, from IT, so I'm lazy. <laughs> so I'm just selecting another tool and selecting them like that. And then I, I would, or maybe do one more thing. How about selecting it in more different way? How about mixing? How about mixing? So how about uh, selecting those two pins and those couple crime places? Uh, from the south uh, of uh, River Thames. Actually, it's the uh, uh, west side of River Thames, if we uh, understood it correctly from the geographic point of view. And um, so what you can choose here, you can choose drive time or radius. So how about checking the radius distance of one kilometer? Uh, OK, we have here miles, yards, so for the American people. And for us, for European, is kilometers more interesting, I think. So I just. Uh, say OK. And right now, there are from those three points, uh, the area of one kilometer selected. And I forgot to select those one. Uh, but believe me, it, it, it would work. We have a uh, little time for all of this, uh, for all, 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 all demos. So I will just move forward. But what is here very interesting? I have just highlighted some area, right? And I can interact with that area. What does it mean is, I can just choose here another tool, uh, like locations using a buffer layer. And just choosing that layer, just location, I'm selecting also the points on the map. Isn't it brilliant? That's actually cool. <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, OK, so come back uh, to in, in the edit mode. And what else is here interesting? Um, I can, of course, change it and make it remove drive time areas. And say, for example, okay, selecting only those. Okay, I will make the uh, selection also with uh, once again with those guys. Okay, I have. I okay. That's that's the, that's the that's the problem. The I don't like it actually. You can select only ten locations at the same time, right? Uh, by uh, calculating the drive time or uh, radius. So how about selecting drive time and distance uh, 30 minutes from those places? Then you see, OK, it's calculating from all those places. So uh, once again, it's OK. So you see here, uh, OK, I will, I will reverse that from default, maybe. Uh, so I suppose that this is the area where I would be able to drive in that place uh, in 30 minutes. So here is another border. And this border is highlighted right now. The red pin is so that those from those places, I will be able to get in to the Big Ben in 30 minutes, I suppose, if the traffic is low. <laughs> uh, OK, so I will reset that. And how about uh, adding some reference layers? Um, so for example, um, here we have three different uh, tabs. Demographics are only from the US. Argus is um, publicly available without plus subscription. And it um, also have some maps for the Europe, not only US. And Living Atlas is only for the uh, paid subscription only. And those are mainly uh, boundaries, postal codes, stuff like that. So uh, what we would like to see, we are looking for something interesting uh, for London. So let us write something in the search box like uh, London. Uh, once one letter more, London. And as an example, we have here London Marathon 2017. So let us add a layer. And you see here, once again, it's scaling. I think my buffer, my buffer is full. Uh, so here is the um, Here's the London Marathon path. 
and some crimes uh, on it also. So as an example, here is in the tower bridge, uh, one crime happened. Uh, so I can go back to the report and then highlight that one crime. And in that place happens uh, a most common uh, drug dealing, I suppose, and running at the same time, maybe. Uh, yeah, OK. Uh, what else can we have here? Uh, we can add some infographs. So, well, reference layers back, uh, come back again. Uh, what is um, kind of a disadvantage is that you can add only one uh, additional layer at the same time. You're not able to add two or three. And the last perfect, brilliant feature is infographics. So um, out of the box without paid subscription is only US demographics available. And for that five bucks a month, uh, you have world demographics available. Uh, so you can choose here United Kingdom, because we are talking about uh, London right now. And you can add some additional layers, like, for example, I don't know, uh, spending, and then spending clothing expenditures in total. On the right side, you have the number, right? Uh, another category, how about, um, I don't know, income and total purchasing power, and maybe something more. How about age? Um, so people which are above uh, 60, and below 14. And as you can see here, you have on the right side um, those infographics added. And you can rearrange them as you wish. So making it at the top and the bottom. And what is very interesting here, that it is totally interactive. What it means is I just move on a little bit on the map, and you have new numbers, right? I will zoom in to the center. And I see here that in that particular area, is, it is exactly what you see is what you get, uh, that the total purchasing power is uh, that much. And the total population, there is um, actually this almost the same amount of um, major people uh, above 60 and children below 14. But if you just switch to more uh, green areas like here, then you see, OK, that in that place, uh, there is, a, OK, maybe something like that a little bit more of um, older people than children. And yeah, the purchasing power is also uh, signif significantly uh, different, right? So if you uh, are trying to um, plan where to uh, set up a new shop, for example, shop uh, uh, where you will be selling clothing, then you might uh, use uh, these infographics, right? So as another example, uh, for one of our clients uh, um, from FXCon, uh, we have um, one requirement from the insurance company uh, to analyze um, the level of rivers and to check um, if the people who are living in those areas are in danger or how, how, uh, how much risk of the flooding is there, how much flooding risk is in the place where people live. In that context, the, the insurance policy uh, can be uh, commonly calculated, right? And those that were also available here in the infographics layer in, for Germany, right? So as, as we were before, heat map is pretty interesting in that particular place. I have loaded that data only for that particular region. So what you see here, what is for me pretty interrupting about that visual is that if I switch uh, to another visual, uh, to another tab, sorry, and then come back, uh, then I have uh, such an error that the map contains plus content and I have to sign in again, uh, which is pretty interrupting uh, because, uh, well, I already signed in with that des uh, probably a desktop session, so why should I do that again? But yeah, I, th I hope the, the, the guys can fix that. But if I'm already signed in, so there's only one pop-up, and then click sign in again, and it's working. OK, so that's the first part uh, about the Argus map for uh, for now. We will move forward uh, to, 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 um, to, to the another uh, visual, which is a synoptic panel. Uh, so synoptic panel is brought by SQL BI guys, uh, as, I, as uh, Dan already said. Um, so this is how it mm, can look like. It's actually a visual which allows you um, to add any image, 
and map it and bind it uh, with the data you have in your data set. So in that particular example is a stock room, so a uh, generic uh, uh, shop, I would say. And then there are places where um, something is being sold. And then you can um, decide in which, uh, which uh, department is uh, have the best sales just by clicking on the image. So as an example here, um, there is a demo for that. Um, so here is a sample from from the guys. I will show just shortly show you. <clears throat> so that's what I was talking about. So you are just choosing uh, on the visual here uh, the areas, and those are cross filtered with all other uh, other data we have in the data set. Right, and what is here very interesting, you can also add multiple of images and switch between them. So as an example here, there is a, just a normal uh, map, but made in a graphical way. I don't think it's uh, much uh, very good visible for you. It's pretty small, uh, but here is a toolbox and you can choose between Euromap or US map. So that was what I was uh, telling about. So uh, I'm just changing, changing the source right here and then, but to do that, you, when you add you, when you add that visual, uh, you have to add to the field maps actually um, the um, the link to the um, SVG file uh, where it is actually being stored. So that particular map. So now the most important uh, thing about that visual is to learn how to create such maps and how to bind that uh, for the data. So uh, to do that, firstly uh, you have uh, to have um, uh, that visual integrate in your Power BI desktop. Uh, it is called, once again, Synaptic Panel by OKViz. Uh, you can import it directly from the store just by uh, typing Synaptic or just panel. I, uh, I just write panel, and you got a Synaptic Panel by OKViz. That's it. And when you have loaded it, you can um, populate it with uh, some data. But before you populate that with data, you have to prepare um, the image. So how you prepare the image, how you generate that uh, SVG file. Um, so to do that, you have to go, I will just close it for, for a second. You have to go to the website, uh, which is um, over here, Synaptic Panel for Power BI. Uh, this is Synaptic Point Design. And you have your editor and gallery. Gallery, there are some already um, pre-made kind of um, visual um, uh, areas, so images with the uh, areas, so like generic airplane, uh, planter food, body areas, uh, so you can just choose uh, generic airplane and in, de in designer. And as you can see, those places are already uh, being um, kind of prepared for the binding. So what I mean by preparing for the binding is just selecting those areas and saying the names uh, for for those from uh, according to the data set. And here is a tricky part. So we will just start from the scratch. Um, I just clear the image. Okay. I will show you the the, the output which we are will try <laughs> to achieve. Uh, it's in synaptic panel over here. I already closed that one. Good. Demo synaptic panel. And uh, what we will try to do is to transform that image into making it more interactive. So what I've done here uh, is that visual. So it's it's maybe not so accurate, but I will just show you how, how to do that. So as you can see here, uh, just an example, storytelling kind of. Um, there, let us imagine we have a company who is producing cars. And uh, in that company is, of course, uh, cooperating with different uh, suppliers, different manufacturers who supply different parts. And you can have multiple of tables and you can have no insights from them. But when you look uh, on that picture, you see already the colors, right? Uh, green, pretty positive, yellow, something in the middle, and red, something negative. So what can be negative over here? I just select here and I see, okay, uh, over here we have production repair cost. It means um, that the repair isn't really doesn't really make sense because it will cost the same as just uh, replacing it with a um, new part, and that's a trunk door. It is uh, delivered by the company uh, Rutherford Brecker, and it is pretty pretty um, common issue that is a fault count. So you can see here on the on the down of the um, 
uh, tooltip. Uh, you see here part ID 5, subcategory trunk door, average production cost 1,500, and fault count out of 1,000 pieces, 80. So pretty um, often uh, failure part. So we might uh, just call the company uh, Rutherford Brecker and say, hey, guys, how about um, changing the way you produce the trunk door because we have to um, actually um, the order by you couple um, more parts because we cannot repair them on our um, on our own just like with front left doors we can uh, repair them just by 100 dollars um, on the fly uh, without uh, building totally new part so how about contacting the company and saying hey guys please don't mess with us <laughs> kind of okay but how i made how i made that uh, that this visual that image is so interactive so i went to the website as i uh, mentioned um here synoptic designer uh, synoptic point design right i just go to editor and uh, how about dragging the image here so i will just browse it from the computer and here is our image i just open it and that's the image. So is someone saying something? Because I've heard something in my headphones right now. No, it was somebody from from, from the office. Um, OK, um, so what we have to do, we have to select the areas, right? And we can do it actually uh, manually. We can zoom in and just select one, two, three, then maybe four. And then just selecting here another tool, just that arrow, select existing areas, and then making it more accurate. So I am not good at drawing. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, and you can make it actually pretty, pretty uh, accurate if you just uh, add some more points, right? Uh, just like that. And then uh, just moving them a little bit. So in that particular example, I would do something like that. So uh, arrange that point to the edges of the image kind of something like that i'm well i'm pretty happy right now and what it did it added a new area uh, with the name number one right and i can write here my custom name for that so let us say it's trunk right and it should be displayed here trunk instead of one right and then it could be, um, of course, uh, be overrided uh, from through the dynamic content from uh, from our data set. How to do that? Uh, keep uh, keep keep watching. Um, so we have one element already selected, but let us say, okay, we are lazy. We are from the IT guys, so <laughs> we are lazy. We can choose another tool, which is called Automatically Discover Bitmap Areas. And how about choosing it in that manner, right? So I have now number two, here number three, here. Okay, that's 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 pretty tricky. So you have to find really a surface um, which is already closed, right? Which has closed borders, and it works much much better. So I made a mistake here. I will just delete those areas just by selecting it uh, from the right panel, and those numbers here those are actually coordinates in the x and epsilon uh, axis uh, of the image right and what we can do right now we can uh, simply export it to power bi right because that's that's what we want to do we wanted to load it to power bi so sorry i don't i won't <laughs> uh, cover the whole image with uh, all tires and um, uh and doors and stuff like that because we don't have uh, 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 such uh, such much time we have a sentence in front of us uh, so i will just uh, export that version to the power bi export to power bi and the thing which you have to do is just right click and choose save image as and then you just uh, choose um, the location where you want to uh, save it so i will just copy paste that path Right, and I will just so save it here, like mm, Carl Live Demo. Save it, and then we go back to our uh, to our Power BI report. And I forgot to tell you, it was pretty important. 
um, about the numbers and the names actually. So um, those areas one, two, three, with those they have to match to the data you have in your data set. So if I have in the data set already the names like trunk, uh, roof, hood, stuff like that, then I will write here trunk, roof, hood, right? But I don't. What I have in my data set, I actually have it already uh, saved like that. Part ID with the number and then the name. So that's why I, I've saved the numbers uh, over there. OK, so let us make it from the scratch. So I will just duplicate it and then delete, delete that visual and add it, a new one for, uh, for our own. So something like that. So uh, we have to add a category. So that was a part ID, the number which we provided in the area. Subcategory would be the name of that uh, part. And yeah, we are pretty good enough to provide the map. So provide the visual, the, the, the image. So we have to uh, load the maps. And but I'm not ready yet. I'm, I would like to add some more uh, information. Um, how about uh, fault count out of 100 pieces? So and make it here uh, in the measure, right? So did I make the same here right now? Yeah. Or or another or another way, make it here into the state measure. I will tell you right uh, soon what is that for, and average production cost as a measure, right? So here are your values you have to provide, and as I've said before, maps that particular field uh, co should correspond to the multiple um, visuals, to multiple uh, images you would like to provide. That's what I. Uh, uh, showed at the beginning, so changing the maps from the US and Europe, and then you have to provide in your data set exact link um, to that uh, to that map, right? Okay, so we are ready with populating the data, but we don't have the image. So what we have to do, we have to click here, load the image, and uh, choose that image. Uh, we were here at Synaptic Panel, Carl Live Demo, that was uh, already being downloaded, and that's it. So as you can see, there are only three elements visible. And we can choose them, and they already work, right? So we can just uh, go into Format, Edit Interactions, and change into Filter instead of um, Highlighting. And here we go. But I had on that <laughs> uh, beautiful uh, tab something more. I had also colors, and I also had uh, the names. So uh, to turn on the names, you have to go into Visualizations panel um, and go to Format. And I suppose it was about data labels here. Turn it on. And you now uh, have the, uh, the names. And you can change it, of course. Um, the most important thing is to change a display here. So you can uh, provide area name. And now it is being shown. OK, it's a little bit too small. I will just make it a little bit larger, right? Something like that. And I will change the color into red. OK. And um, maybe red is not a good idea. Maybe yellow, uh, even, but even worse. <laughs> However, as you can see, those values are exactly the same values which we had uh, provided in uh, our designer in the web, right? I've wrote his trunk as a custom name. Right, a real name, and those are uh, empty. So the default is just uh, the title two and three, right? And this is the same here uh, happened, right? But I can also change it, and instead of displaying the area name which we um, define in the SVG file, uh, we can just switch to the area and value uh, or column and value. That's interesting, or just column, mm, data column. Right, and now we have the name from our data set. Of course, the, the names doesn't correspond to reality because uh, I didn't match the, the numbers correctly. I uh, didn't check, double check that with, uh, with the data set, uh, but yeah, that's the idea. And the last part, colors, okay? So how do we um, control the states? Uh, so I've provided here as a state measure, uh, first uh, fault count uh, out of 100 pieces. So how, so how often, uh, that particular part uh, is uh, is failed, right? So um, we can just go over here, states, then choose um, um, 
okay, I will just show you the the the, the ready one because we have we are almost out of time. Uh, states here, I just uh, choose the um, appropriate symbol, appropriate sign, uh, mathematical, and we see here uh, state value A, B, C. Okay, you can also choose uh, two more, but I've uh, chosen only three, and I've said state value if it is less because less sign less than 10 then color it on green right and this is seven so it's less than uh 10. uh if it is okay go back if it is uh state b value state b num is yellow if it's below 30 then color it on yellow so here it is 10 here is 11 so here is 12 fold count out of 100 pieces the 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 bottom line and the last one is C red, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Below uh, 90, those are highlighted, right? So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope um, you like the visual and you have a lot of ideas how you can uh, implement it in your projects. Uh, as an example, in one of um, our clients had also a, um, a requirement to um show the data about the, uh, the vending machines they are producing and selling and we have to uh, show graphically uh, on the vending machine um which parts are being broken at the most time so what we've done what we made a proof of concept so we are still um working on it so the colors are not fancy enough <laughs> i know that uh, but as you can see here you can choose just the parts over there and the data is being also filtered Okay, so that's pretty much it about synoptic panel. And the last part is uh, sentence. Sentence is uh, uh, actually, it is a standalone uh, application um, in the web, uh, which is made uh, by Microsoft Research Group. And you can find it um, just by typing that address, sentence.azurewebsite.net. Uh, but it is also available directly in Power BI as a custom visual. And I will show you how it looks like uh, in Power BI itself. So um, we are back to our first data set about crimes. And now we will be talking a little bit uh, about crimes, uh, the, the second the second data set, stop and search, right? Okay, so what do we have to do to use um, to use uh, sentence? We have to load it first from the uh, store. So again, import from the store. Uh, unable to import. Please check your connection. So I suppose I have no internet right now. Uh, are you still hearing me? Dan? Yep. Yep. We can still hear you. Okay, that's pretty pretty strange. So. Um, let us say I already downloaded <laughs> and I had any internet issues. Uh, so we have the um, uh, sentence visual over there. So what you have to do is, it's actually a little bit different like uh, making it with, uh, normal visuals in Power BI because everything will be, uh, almost everything in the visual itself. So what you have to do is, is just um, drag and drop the values in that field and that's it. So uh, I just add uh, daytime values. I will just add uh, age range. I uh, will add gender of uh, data. OK, I will have to uh, need some handout. Um, what else? I will add type. I will add outcome, maybe. I will add officer uh, define ethnicity. I will add object of search. I will find a self-defined ethnicity. Uh, actually, the, it doesn't matter in which, uh, uh, how are they arranged. Uh, so then they don't have to be ordered over there. The ordering will be doing in the uh, visual itself. Uh, what we also have, uh, date. Oh, I actually forgot about one uh, cool feature uh, in the um, Arcis map. So I will just come back uh, just shortly here. Uh, to the to our map area, um, signing in again. I hate it. Okay, and it's, I'm signed out, so I will show you that over there, and I will just delete those reports. And okay, you can also add one more uh, one more um, uh, dimension of data, and that dimension is time. 
So how about going over here and adding some date into time level here? OK, I can do that. Why? Uh, I have no relationships here. OK, sorry, I've, I've made a mistake. It's not a uh, right table. Those tables are not connected. OK, that's that one, uh, date. OK, so what you now got here is an additional layer, is kind of uh, a slicer. And you can just make it play, and then it will show the data, uh, how are they happening uh, on the map, right? And you can also make it manually, just switching it from time to time, or making it uh, another uh, block, another bin, like a little bit bigger, and then playing again. Right. So that's that's the feature I forgot to tell you about. Okay, come back to to the sentence. Um, so I think I have all data already. Object of search, daytime. Uh, yeah, I think we are good to go. So. Um, what we have to do is actually play a little bit with our data. So that's the idea of sentence, to play with your data, to um, actually uh, find some insights on your own, kind of. <laughs> but you can also pre uh, prepare kind of animation, which I will show you uh, in a moment. Um, so uh, just, uh, just from the beginning, just uh, switching here on the x-axis gender. And you can see here every point here is a simple um, row in the database, in our data set. So it's actually one person. So uh, I actually recommend to use that button and go under Edit, because <laughs> uh, first, then you have the old tools you have in Sendence. Um, so we have male and female. What I can change right now, I can make color by, and for example, choose color by, how about age range, right? And now I see, uh, OK, pretty chaotic. So I would like to sort it a little bit and sort by color. So now it's a little bit sorted. And you can see here some, some structure, but uh, it still doesn't say me um, much, of, much about. So I can also use another thing, which is face it by. And how about facing by object of search? And now it's something different, right? And we see here. Um, that the major um, crime, because the major reason why the people are being uh, stopped and searched by the police are controlled drugs and stolen goods, and majority, of course, men. But you already have in one visual actually one uh, gender, second count, uh, so the amount of people, uh, third uh, dimension uh, is uh, the object of search, and fourth dimension, so actually three dimensions, because the number is actually not a dimension at all. So the third dimension is age of range. So as you can see here, only by looking and glancing on the visual, here are those two points in a different uh, color, which doesn't exist in any of them, actually, and also in stolen goods, face it. It doesn't exist. So what is that color? That particular one color, there is, those are people who are under 10, and the object of search is controlled drugs, right? So there, there was two guys who have been stopped by the police. And of course, it is uh, cross-filtering. So if I just select it over here, uh, so I will just go back to report. And um, as an example, I will just pick here another field like, um, uh, for example, uh, something different like um, age range and object of search. So what I choose in that visual is also chosen in another visual. So it's the same like by uh, synaptic, right? So it's cross-filtering. I just uh, choose only uh, people up under 10, so the kids, and they were being stopped because of drugs only, right, as an example. But you can also play a little bit more with your data. So we just come back to our edit mode. And uh, instead of facing it, uh, you can, OK, I will just make those face it out and view as how about stacks, right? So now it's totally different uh, visualizations. And instead of gender, I would like to see um, how about um, object of search. And on the left side, we have daytime, right? So now you can see here that there are 
two crimes which are the most popular and i don't know it's so easy to see so you can choose 3d rotate from the navigation panel and just play a little bit with your data right so as i said before it's just playing with your data right and i still don't see much so i would just reset navigation go zoom out a little bit with my mouse and then uh, i will just select it just like that and i just selected some some values but i also selected articles for use in criminal damage right and i'm only interested in control drugs right so i just deselected one that one um, okay once again just select control drugs and then i will just go to isolate those data clicking over here and now you see only uh data from uh about uh, where the object of search was controlled drugs so I will just rotate it a little bit, just like that. But still, I, I'm missing one more dimension. So how about, OK, uh, leaving the daytime and changing it here to how about outcome, right? And now you see here uh, some structure, right? And again, we see those two points, those pink points. And those were age range, age range under 10, right? So it's a little bit playing a little bit with your data. But what I've said, uh, which is not available in the web version of that visual. Um, so the web version, what I mean is, um, uh, of course, that one, right? Uh, it is not possible to produce animations, right? And over here, you can add such an animation. So how to do that? Um, what I mean by the animation is just, OK, choosing another view. Uh, let us choose, again, columns, just simple, like that. And go over here, open Insights panel, and add a new insight, right? You can uh, name it as you wish. So let's say, um, so it's just outcome versus age range, right? Uh, another, OK, then I will just switch to the, something different. So instead of uh, outcome or maybe having it the same, um, the same, um, the same data, but different visualized. So how about stacks, right? And even moving it a little bit, something like that. And then I will add that to our to our insights bar as a new insight, and then remain, renaming it. And I will just say, OK, another uh, insight. So clicking OK. And then you can just click play. And you see those two insights being played one after another. Right? So that's the idea. Of course, you have uh, plenty more uh, possibilities, plenty more different uh, visuals. There's, of course, scatters, density. Dense, uh, scatter is pretty interesting. I don't have um, nice data about crimes here. Uh, okay, I do have, because, but uh, they are in pretty narrow localizations. But uh, as an example here, um, uh, data is a demo vote from the Microsoft research. Those are the data from, I suppose, 2010. Uh, when the people were voting against Obama or um, uh, Romney. And you can just select here another visualizations instead of column, choosing by uh, st scatter, I suppose. Yeah, and now you see the structure, right? So on the X axis, we have longitude. On the epsilon axis, latitude. And you, you got your structure in your data. So you're playing with your data. You're uh, painting almost with your data and uh, generating uh, more and more uh, insights. So it's pretty straightforward. So you don't have to install it in Power BI Desktop. You can also use the um, the browser version and also uh, change different visuals. So you also have stacks here. And you can also make the, the same uh, play stuff you made uh, in the Power BI Desktop. So you also have here navigation. So that was what I was looking about. And yeah. So when it's not structured, then you have to just choose sort by color. And it, it it is much more beautiful, <laughs> I suppose. Um, OK, uh, so that's pretty much it about uh, that particular uh, visual. Uh, but what is here in Power BI Desktop also much, much more available um, is more uh, different visuals, not only those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which were in the browser version, uh, but also some custom 
And to activate them, you just go in under settings, sentence. Uh, you can activate some icon bars like searching the data. So you can actually uh, type in the search um, particular name of the person and it should, okay, those data are anonymized, but just typing drags and you will find uh, hopefully only the items um, where the drugs is stored as in, in the row. Uh, but there was in here in the view, exactly, experimental views, random, poison. So those are experimental and additional, uh, additionally available uh, from the Power BI desktop. And now uh, you can just change it from stacks into, I don't know, how about violin? Right, so uh, I'm. It's pretty fast. It, I know it is actually sentence itself. Uh, I should have uh, one hour actually to show you whole uh, possibilities uh, within which you can play um, with that visual, right? Because uh, as as you see in here, you can isolate the data. So you can, for example, uh, choose our suspect arrested and isolate those data, and then um, make the analysis only about the people who have been arrested, or uh, maybe you say, I'm not interested in, in those data. So, so you choose here, uh, isolate, right? And then you have those data, uh, not anymore. You're not interested in them, right? Yeah, and as I as I said before, uh, there are really a lot, a lot of uh, features in Sendence uh, available. So you should play a little bit around on your own. Um, so here is some visuals I prepared uh, previously. And uh, you can also choose that uh, feature lock selection. What it does is when you just select in any of animation um, the the data, it will be uh, highlighted across the all animations, across all tiles, across all slides, um, right? So that's pretty 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 fancy, I think. And um, yeah, that's that's the basic features uh, from Sendence. Uh, uh, we have still uh, two or three minutes for the questions. If you have any. Uh, feel free to go. Feel free to 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 write. And uh, thank you very much for uh, for now. Um, so to make it more official, I will just uh, play the last slide. <laughs> thank you for your attention. <laughs> oh, I love the slide. <laughs> oh, thanks, Barry. This was outstanding. Uh, it's great to actually see these visualizations and and have you take a tour of them for us, so we could actually see how they're used. Um, a lot of times, it's challenging. Um, when you just go in there and try to do it on your own and don't really know how it is supposed to work and function. So this was this was really good. Um, yeah, we do have a few questions here. Uh, let's see, the first one we have is with the ArcGIS map, um, is it possible to import your own GIS layer if you have a corporate account? Uh, I haven't found that feature yet. But I suppose uh, it, it, it would be worth to contact the S3. But I, I, on my own, I, have, I haven't found that feature yet. Sure, OK. Um, and then someone else in regards to that uh, ArcGIS, um, they're wondering if you have the Power BI server and the ArcGIS desktop as separate licenses, can you use those licenses in the integrated Power BI platform? Does that make um, sense? <laughs> Actually, I have no idea. <laughs> I haven't uh, thought about that. Uh, so the so the question is to use both licenses, um, the license from Esri from the standalone application. Uh, the person is meaning, right? Yeah, it sounds like they have an Esri subscription and and they have the Power BI. So they're. Uh, they're I think that the Esri subscriptions are uh, is is it connected already that plus subscription? If so, then you it is the the best solution is just using uh, the visual from S3 um, in the Power BI. So that's the the best uh, use case, I suppose, the scenario how to use that instead yeah. of uh, dividing it to two tools, two separate tools, just to combine them in one tool and uh, make that integration um, in the Power BI itself. Yeah. Okay, and then just one more here. Um, someone was wondering on that uh, on the ArcGIS map is. Can you make lines instead of using like points? Um, to connect the, the, the points between uh, between another, um, uh, to connect the points. Uh, I wouldn't use ArcGIS map for that because I haven't found a feature for that. Uh, there is another visual, uh, which is, I forgot the name right now, but there is a visual who which allows you 
uh, to add uh, the to connect the points on the map layer. Yeah, uh, I, I will. I will check check that out. Uh, what is the name and maybe write it uh, somewhere in, in in the in the group in the past group. Okay. Yeah, there are a couple more. Um, I can I can send you these questions if you wanted to follow up with them. Um, but we're out of time for today. Uh, I want to thank Merrick for your offering up to present to our community. Um, this was outstanding. Um, great to have you present today. Great to check out these Power BI visualizations. Um, we got to sign off for today. But Merrick, do you have any uh, last parting words of advice or wisdom for our community here? Uh, experiment and play with your data. Have uh, actually uh, that uh, excitement about finding new features, uh, because I think that's the most uh, interesting part, which can excite your um, customers. So, as an example, uh, the sentence itself, I think uh, that is the tool more about exciting the customer and showing the possibilities uh, which uh, modern visualization visualizations tool um, are giving us today. That's great. Great words of advice. OK, everyone, thank you so much for attending. Uh, just remember when you sign off today to fill out the survey, and we'll be uh, randomly selecting uh, those gift cards to give out. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. Uh, and thanks so much, Merrick. Appreciate you taking the time to present to our community. Thank you very much, and have a nice day or evening, depending on the time zone. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Bye, everyone.